Good day, everyone. My name is Jan Clarice M. Sumawang from CTP71. And for this video, I'll be discussing service learning. So to give you an idea about my topic, here are the things that I'll be talking about all throughout this video. We have service learning, stages, examples, models, and benefits. So let's define service learning first. So when we see service learning, it is an educational approach that allows students to explore the connection between the academic knowledge and real-world experiences. So in short, when we see service learning, it is the connection of learning to the needs of community. Also, this is a pedagogy and known as Experiential learning wherein students are performing various civic activities and active participants contributing to their own learning and aims to develop their critical thinking skills in resolving relevant issues. Also, this is a good way to awaken their sense of responsibility and commitment to the community as well. So those students, especially who are in the higher levels, Taking up this course, have to partner or work with nonprofit and public organizations to apply and practice the course content. Now, let's have the stages of service learning. So, for the students to properly execute service learning, they may follow this procedure. So, we have the IPARD. I for investigation, P for preparation, A for action, R for reflection, and D for demonstration. So let's have investigation first. So this includes gathering students' skills, interests, talents, and critical thinking to analyze relevant issues and needs of the community. So for this stage, this is a phase where students have to investigate and identify the leading problem in a certain state through researches, interviewing experts, surveys, direct observation, and also their personal experiences. An action and research is one of the ways to address these concerns and to further discuss the solutions. Next, let's have P for preparation, which involves planning and continuously gaining knowledge and skills associated with academic objectives. So for the students to achieve this one, it will be possible by undergoing service plus finding their target community, partners, and, and clients that is related to their concern or the, the problem that they want to address. Next is action. So when we say action, it is the execution of plan in different service forms. It, is must, it must be well designed together with their chosen organization and aims for equal benefits for all involved parties. So when we say service forms, so these are the different examples of services like direct service, indirect service, advocacy-based, and research-based. Research now let's have reflection, which emphasizes feelings, learnings, experiences, and summarizing of thoughts regarding the essential problems addressed in the plan. So this can be done in many creative modes like journal writing, role-playing, and discussion. So for this stage, it is a part where to discuss what happened before, during, and after the entire service process. And also, we can discuss or the students can discuss their view of the issue in a larger context. They can also say the insights they got from their service partners, what improved and needs to work on, and if there are changes made. Now, the last one is letter D for demonstration. 
It is about showcasing what and how they have learned by documenting all parts of the process. So this requires the ability of students to tell the story of what occurred, skills equipped, and the outcome during their entire service. So students can, can also integrate the use of technology as they tell more about what happened during the entire process, like reporting it to peers, family, friends, and or people in the community, also writing articles on newspapers or letters about the public concern and through photography. Now let's proceed to the examples of service learning. So we have here four. First is direct, indirect, advocacy-based, and research-based. So when we say direct service, it is working directly with the organization and individuals to address what community needs. So in short, when we say direct service, it is a service in an interpersonal level where in actual there's an actual interaction with the people in your chosen community. So some examples are providing food to those who are homeless, organizing mobile classrooms for street children, animal shelter feeding program, tutoring, and volunteering for disaster services. So psychology and education related courses incorporate these kind of services in their curriculum. Next, we have the indirect service. So indirect service, this is the opposite of the direct because this one, it is about working behind the scenes with the organization by assisting them in planning, developing a strategy, designing layouts, building infrastructure, and cleaning the environment. So here, the indirect service is also about fulfilling the problem without engaging with the actual clients or their target population. So this can be implemented by organizing a fundraising event like concert or bazaar for a cause wherein there is a specific beneficiary, cleanup drive, tree planting activity if you're if you want to address a problem about maintaining a good environment creating promotional materials for marketing like posters flyers and renovating local communities facilities those who are under environmental and sociology courses tend to incorporate these kind of activities now let's have the third, which is the advocacy based. So it is a type of service where the students are intent to convey awareness or educate people regarding timely issues present in their community. So the objective of this service is to seek support, promotion, protection, and speaking up for men. Also just to add, Inviting a resource speaker to discuss a topic of interest, writing letters to government offices, working with the organizations that draft proposals to prioritize mental health, gender equality, and human rights are some of the examples of advocacy works. So courses like political science and criminal justice feature these, kind, these kinds of work. Now we have the research based. So it is about a collaboration with a community partner, nonprofit organization, government agencies, and community leaders. Also, it is more on gathering information and analyzing qualitative and quantitative data that will help to justify the issue or need in the community. So some examples are like the first one, which is the water testing were to find a good source of water within the locality to prevent diseases causing by it. 
and also energy audits in public buildings for them to discover how to use less energy in a big establishment with more facilities. Now we have the models of service learning. So we have here six things or six categories to discuss. Peer service learning, discipline-based, problem-based, capstone courses, service internships, and community-based action research. So when we say pure service learning, these are courses that not only send out students to serve, but to have the idea of service to the community by students, volunteers, or engaged citizens, and are not limited to only one discipline. Also, just to add, civic perks that prepare students to actively participate and be responsible in the community. That's the aim of the peer service learning. Next, discipline-based. So the presence of students is expected throughout the semester and work regularly to meet the needs of community and course objectives. So they work on their reflections through journals, doing different papers and projects too. Next, we have the problem-based. Students act as consultants to help the communities resolve a particular problem. The student should have the necessary knowledge for the project. Why? It is because the student, eh, the student gives recommendations on what to improve and develop. Next, we have the capstone courses summarize the knowledge they have acquired throughout the coursework and link it with the appropriate work in the community. So this is also good in transition of becoming professionals for the students and to embody essential skill, skill set needed in the future. Now we have the service internships. So this is the typical service internship that we already know. So traditional service service internships wherein students will require to work for 10 to 20 hours a week on a site. The community members and student benefit equally. Like for example, a law student serving at a law firm or a house of of representatives so the law student can apply his or her learnings about law taxes and so on early education student serving at a preschool what kind of a what type of approach can she apply there as she teaches the students the young students and also med students serving at red cross Now we have the last um, category, which is the community-based action research. So students work with faculty to learn new research methodologies while, method methodologies while service as advocates for a community. And now for the last part of this topic, we will now discuss the benefits of service learning. So here, let's know more the benefits of service learning for students. So for students, it applies academic concepts. They apply academic concepts learned to real service experiences, learns the role in the community, learns the capability for serving others, enhances decision-making and obtain prerequisite career-related skills like leadership and communication skills, trains to become a responsible citizen and their awareness in cultural diversity or cultural differences. Now, for the faculty, the benefits are first, enhancement of teaching methods, better understanding of how learning occurs, promote student-centered teaching, making the community aware with the curriculum, identifying ideas for research. 
as they discover trends and issues. And now for the community, they can provide technical and research support, allowing on-site work specifically for students to have hands-on learning and to really apply what they have learned, positive relationship with the educational sector, awareness building of community issues, people and agencies, attain short-term and long-term solutions to community needs. That's all for my topic and thank you so much for listening. You may check you may check out the links after this page to visit the sources I used related to this topic. Thank you so much.